Hello everyone, in this video tutorial, we are going to make a vertically moving backdrop, okay, one that moves up and down, alright, and for this case, our backdrop is not going to move up, it's going to move downwards to give the illusion of a rocket sprite blasting off into space, okay, so just to show you, I've already created a new project, uh, it's called Rocket Fly. I've used the rocket sprite. I've coded for the sprite to change its costume. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, you can see that it's blasting off. So with its blasting off upwards, that means that the backdrop has to move downwards to give the illusion of the rocket blasting up into space. Okay, so opposites happen. All right, so I'm going to pause this. Okay, so everyone, uh, something interesting to note about Scratch is... Uh, for your stage backdrops, you're actually unable to make it move. Let me just show you why. If you click on this, okay, move, movement or motion is actually disabled. So what we can do is we actually change our backdrop, use it as a sprite instead of a stage. Okay, so how to do this? First, I'm going to get started from my stage backdrop first. I'm going to choose a backdrop of a uh, starry sky. So it just so happens that the sprite library has a nice one that's plain. Okay, so stars, I'm going to use this. Okay, now everyone, uh, if you go to backdrop costume editor, okay, I'm going to pull out this image of stars and put it as a new sprite instead of a stage. Okay, so I'm going to just create a new sprite that's empty and then I go back to my stage backdrop. I'm going to drag out this image, hover over the new sprite, and just drop it there. Okay, if you're worried that you might get confused, what you can do is to click back on your stage backdrop, uh, remove the image of the stars here, so your background is actually white color. Okay, but you go back to your backdrop sprite, and then you rename it as backdrop. Okay. So everyone, this is our backdrop sprite that's going to pretend to be our background. Okay, so let's get started with the coding. Alright, go to code. Okay, first things first, we are going to just manually move this backdrop to rest in the middle. Okay, and we're going to make sure that this backdrop sprite is actually behind the rocket sprite. So how to do the coding for this? I'm going to add my events first. My green flag is going to control the entire Scratch program. Okay, I'm going to go to Looks next. If you scroll down, there are actually uh, two blocks that allow you to change the layer or the position of the backdrop in relation to the other sprite. Okay, so I'm going to use the second block. Go, instead of forward, change to backward. Go backward, how many layers? Let's give a rough estimate. Let's do about 10 layers to make sure that it goes all the way to the back. Okay, so with that done, you can just click on your code here and you should see that it has moved all the way behind the rocket sprite. Okay, so now everyone, let's get started with more in-depth coding. Okay, now that we have sent our backdrop to the back, we're going to make it move. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to change the X and Y position, right? So for that, we are going to make our very own X and Y po variable positions. Okay, so let's go to variables. Alright, I've already created some variables here, x position 1, x position 2, y position 1, y position 2. Okay, now our backdrop moving is going to happen using two sprites. So the current one that I have here is going to be backdrop 1. Okay, let me just change the name a bit so that you can recognize it better. Okay, so for backdrop 1, I'm going to set, okay, the variable x position 1, 1 for backdrop 1 to 0. Okay, and then I'm going to set another variable, my y position 1. Okay, remember 1 refers to the first backdrop sprite to 0 as well. So this means that my backdrop will start right in the middle of my scratch screen. Okay, <coughs> now let's get started with more in-depth coding. Okay, as mentioned in the previous video, these are x and y variables that you have created. But Scratch doesn't know that these are going to be X and Y. So you have to make sure that Scratch understands this as it's X and Y. So how to do this? Go to Motion. Okay, we're going to make the sprite go to an X and Y position. But what position exactly? 
Well, we're going to equate this x of scratch program to our x position 1, okay, which is the variable we created. And this y is going to be our own y position 1 that we created. Okay, so now Scratch will understand that its x and y is going to be controlled by our x and y. Okay, now this is just the placement. Let's get started with the movement code. Okay, so forever we're going to make the backdrop move. Okay, let's go to control, pull out of forever block. Okay, we are going to change one of the position of our backdrop. Okay, since our rocket is blasting upwards into space, we're going to give the illusion of the rocket blasting up by making our backdrop move down instead, in the opposite direction. Okay, so moving down would mean that we'll have to change the backdrop y value by minus something. Okay, so let's do a minus here. Okay, forever variables change my y position by minus, let's do a minus 10. Okay, so it should move downwards like this. All right, not so obvious here because it's not complete yet. Okay, so we change y position by minus 10, but it hasn't affected the change for our x and y. So we have to make sure we duplicate this go to code. All right, delete off the excess. Okay, once we change our y position by a value, make sure that our backdrop sprite actually goes to that new position. That's why we need this second block here. Go to x, your x, go to y, your y. Okay, so it should look something like this. All right, now great. Now everyone, you notice that it will move all the way to the end of the screen and then you'll get stuck here at this unknown value. Okay, it's not really unknown. All right, if you actually do your research, scratch x and y dimensions are the, the bottom most value of y is actually minus 360. Okay, it's 3, 4, 5 here and you'll notice there's a bit of gap. So to get it all the way to the bottom, it's minus 360. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to add a condition. If, okay, if my backdrop reaches the bottom most value of y, which is minus 360. So how I do this, I'm going to add an operator less than. Okay, if my y position is less than minus 360 here, then what's going to happen is I'm going to reset, reset my y position, all right, all the way back to the initial point, okay, which is 360, all the way at the end here, the other side. So if you were to press your green flag, it should look something like this, okay, an never-ending loop of a moving backdrop, okay? But then you'll notice that there's a big white gap here. So how? How do we fill up the space? We basically need to make another copy of this backdrop sprite to fill in this space. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to duplicate this backdrop 1. Okay, now it has become backdrop 2. Okay, make sure you click onto the correct backdrop. So I'm clicking on backdrop 2 now. I'm going to substitute and change all these position 1s to position 2 because the 2 will represent the second backdrop. So let's just change it slowly. Now our x position 1 will be x position 2, y position 1 will be y position 2, go to x position 2, go to y position 2. Okay, do this slowly and check your work. Make sure you don't miss anything out. Everything should end with a 2. Oops. All right. Yeah, just do it really slowly so you make sure you get everything correct. Y position 2, less than minus 360. Set your Y position 2 to 360. Okay, so I've substituted all my position 1 with position 2 for my second backdrop. Let's play and see what happens. Okay, you will notice that nothing actually happened. My backdrop is still moving exactly the same way as my first backdrop sprite. So what do we do? Okay, if you recall, it's going to fill up the gap here. It's going to make sure that my second backdrop starts behind my first. So what I can do is look at my first x position. Instead of 0, I'm going to add 360 to it. Okay, so that it starts right at the end here at the start. So for backdrop 2, change your x position to x position 360. Okay, press the green flag. All 
all right, I have made a mistake somewhere. Oh, sorry, this is not X. This should be a Y. Okay, because our Y is the one that's moving. Okay. Ah, and there we go. We fixed the error. Sorry. Okay, so my mistake was I put it at X. It should be Y because our Y is moving. Okay, so everyone, this is basically the finished coding. Now, you notice that when you look at your animation, there's a bit of a gap here, okay, which we don't really like. So what you can actually do is you just go to your costume editor and you just make sure that your backdrop is all stretched out. Okay, so I'm going to use the vector version. I'm going to just stretch my backdrop all the way. All right, make sure that it touches the full screen. Okay, if there's a space here, just got to use my up and down arrows to resize, shift it. Okay. All right, let's do the same for this one. Convert to vector. There we go. Okay, you notice that my backdrop has different grade, color gradients. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip it vertically. Okay, so that the black side touches the black side. The bluish, bluish side touch the other bluish side. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, if you notice more gaps, don't worry, don't panic. Just make sure you stretch your entire image all the way to fill the entire screen. Okay? So this will take a lot of trial and error and testing before you finally get like the perfect backdrop. Okay? Alright, yeah, I see a little gap here. So I'm just going to stretch it to make sure it covers. And there you go, voila! You have finished your moving vertically, uh, vertically moving backdrop. Okay, so have fun with this. You might need to play around with your code to understand it a bit better. And just check through all your codes. This is backdrop 1. Okay, this is backdrop 2. Just to make sure that it flows smoothly. Alright, so enjoy. Have fun. Don't forget to save your work. Okay.